The challenge at the time is, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Really, again, are you gonna try to pull this off in this, this time frame? Um, but then when we pull it off, it just feels good. So the challenge really is just an opportunity for growth. Welcome everyone to Coffee Conversations. Cheers it up. Yes, Cheers. we've got Caesar and a special guest, Sarah Livingstone in the house. The lovely Sarah. The stone of the living. <laughs> the living of the stone. Sarah has been my assistant for the last six and a half years or six years? Six years. Six years, three days ago. What's your start day, right? Monday. Monday, well the 17th, June 17th, right? Mm-hmm. And it's June nineteenth while we're recording it, and you're you're leaving us, you're leaving us forever, you're moving on to, <laughs> <laughs> you're moving on to uh, a new adventure in your life, and uh, it's been an amazing six years. So thank you for being here. Yes. We thought we'd have you on and give you one final challenge, your biggest challenge to come on the show because you don't like being on camera, no. you don't like speaking in front of people, so we get to constantly help her grow and challenge her. To become a better person. But you're so great <clears throat> at it, and that's the thing. She is no, good. Don't know. No. You have such humor and wit. Yes. When she speaks at the mastermind oh, every man. now and then, it's golden. people love it. It's golden. People love it. When they get to know you, it's just like. It's I like have a best successfully friend. dodged every camera. Yeah, photo. Photo. It's amazing. You know, you have for six you years. Have I mean. Six years. So when you first came in, uh, I try. I was looking for an assistant six and a half years ago. And I was asking everyone. I don't know if I asked you, Matt, if I was asking you, but. I remember when you were looking for an assistant, for sure, because I've, I've seen the previous assistants before that, too. Yeah. I saw the struggle you had right before Sarah. Yeah, I had a just, couple. It was before I came on the business. Uh -huh. So I remember seeing that struggle, and I think, I don't want to get into that, but yeah. I think you wanted somebody who was all in and dedicated, and right. you were finding people that were like part-time and, half, and half in and half out, and that was a struggle, yeah. so. Yeah. And I was like, this is what I need. I need someone who can do anything at all times. I was like talking to everyone, I was like, someone who could cook, who can run around, who can see, who can like sew things, anything, right? Yeah. And I was yeah. telling all my friends and my chiropractor time, Trish, she, I was telling her, and she was like working on my back or something, and she was like, I think I know someone in Utah. And I go, get her on the phone, let's get her out here. And I was telling her all the details of what I wanted, and she was like, yeah, this mm -hmm. is you. And then you came out for a visit, I think, like a week or two later? Yeah, well, I was scheduled to come out because I was looking for, uh, I was coming out to interview massage therapy schools. Right. And mm. I just happened to be in town, and then we set up the... It was like a week or two later. Interview. Yeah, right? it was, the, the timing yeah. was perfect, yeah. Were yeah. you and Trish going to, like, go into business together? Because Dr. Trisha Smith is, like, crushing it right now with Wim Hof Method. Yeah. Well, she was and just getting started. She was, like, maybe a year Well, she's a physical yeah. therapist, and uh, she was working on your wrist, right? Because you had that wrist, but also just my back, everything. Like, because I was doing all that CrossFit then, so I was just mm -hmm. getting injured constantly. Well, you were telling you were telling me she was the one who literally gave you the mobility back in your wrist. Yeah, it helped. from the the injury that you had in arena yeah, football. Helped. Yeah, I mean it's still limited, but she helped a lot. For sure. sure. Yeah. But we met at Earth Bar. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And she was super nervous then. We met there, and I was asking <laughs> you questions, <clears throat> and you were like, well, "I'm going to come and do this massage school." And then I'll work also part time or something. Is that what you said? Well, I was coming. I was just going to come to LA to do the school and then go back to Utah. Mm -hmm. And then you enrolled me. I convinced you. Yeah. Otherwise. I said, "Come on." And you were like, "No, nah, I'm going to go to school." Did it, but weren't you going to work and go to school at the same time? Not here. I was just coming to go to school, and I was staying with Trish while I was. But then going when you to... came on board, you were also like, "I'm going to go to school at the same time." I think I was going to try it out to see how it... And then two weeks yeah. later, you're like, ah, never mind. Well, you were a full-time job. <laughs> yeah, that's I, true. I didn't know this. The cool thing I'm hearing right now is like, you're saying Lewis enrolled you hard. He and totally if, interrupted if, if what people I don't was, know, yeah. like the second you meet Lewis... She had a vision. It's like a tractor beam. <laughs> yeah, you just can't no. get out. You're in. You're, you're you are in. in. No, she had a whole other plan, and I just said, no, I need mm -hmm. you here. And you were resisting for a while, I remember. And then you were like, okay, never mind. I think I kept telling you, I was like, what do you want to do? Like, rub... Like old men, like all day long. <laughs> I was like, uh, nope. I was like, 
I was like half naked on the bed, like I can hear you bags. saying yeah. that exactly what like, you just said. What? I can hear that. Is this what you want to do for the next <laughs> ten years of your life? Nothing wrong with that. I mean, hey, but um, or do you want to go change the world or something like that? I think I said something like that. So. I'm glad you came on board. It's been six mm. long years. No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> it's been amazing. And um, we have a timeline of a lot of things I want to talk about. And then we have some questions from our Inner Circle members for you. But I'm curious, before we get into all this, what's been the biggest, uh, biggest lesson of the last six years for you while being part of the School of Greatness? Whether it was just me and you in the beginning or as you've seen the team come, grow, and some people come, some people leave. What's been biggest growth for you in six years? Hmm. Uh, I would say just that reaffirming that everything and anything is possible, that you've stretched me to get outside of my comfort zone when, you know, if I'm negotiating something on your behalf, like mm. if it were for me, I would never ask those questions or never push that hard or never ask for a deeper discount or you know <laughs> and so you've stretched me to you know get outside of my comfort zone mm. and you know knowing that there's always a way there's always mm. you know a lower price or <laughs> you know a, a better deal and I would have limiting beliefs or like there's no way there's no way that no and you know a charm we <laughs> trust and Sure enough, you know, you yeah. ask, and Most you know, it would it come. Out. Yes, yeah. it would. It would have blow me away. So just and the charm reminder. We trust. And what's charm a, we yes. trust. What's an example of something you asked for that you didn't think was going to happen? Oh. Can, you, can you think of anything? Anything specific come to mind? I think these aren't really big ones, but I think more just being more recent history is negotiating. You know, for the events and venues and. Um, but man, from rent, you know, finding apartments Ooh. or, I don't know, I'm trying to think. So there's been some big ones where I'm like, no way. And I'm like <laughs> cringing having to even ask the questions and. See, something's come up for me because, you know, Lewis says, and you always repeated this to me, Lewis's way of requesting anything from anybody is, and it starts like this. And literally, if you have a pen and paper right now, <laughs> use this because yeah. it works. And you go, and your request comes in the form of, what are the chances? Mm -hmm. And then you leave dot, that little dot, ellipsis. Dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. What are the chances, based on what you're saying is possible, what are the chances we can double or triple yeah. or think outside the box or come up with some crazy outlandish idea or dream and make it happen? Mm -hmm. And it just pushes people that much further to see what's outside of their, because people typically, they're, they're, they want to stay in the comfort zone. Yeah. I mean, I'd see myself doing it, and I just continue to want to push. And I think, again, we always go back to like the athlete mindset. And I actually have a question for you: What has been like working with us as well in this dynamic? <clears throat> right. Because, I mean, I came on a couple of years after you, but I know yeah. it's it's like these this athlete mindset is like let's just push, let's see what's possible. Yeah. Let's not be afraid to ask. Let's get fear out of the equation mm -hmm. right now and just go for it. So, I don't know. Back back to you. I just have to say that literally this coffee conversations for me is just a straight out celebration of you because I have to say the ripple impact you've had on mm. me on the podcast on Lewis on the entire team mm -hmm. I mean Tiff sitting here I just know everybody we say this as a ter term of endearment for you uh, you're the HBIC which is the head bleep in charge <laughs> insert whatever you want to insert but um, I have to say like <clears throat> the two things that come to mind about you that just have made such an impact on this business are thoughtfulness mm -hmm. and effort. And every part of the way and everything that you do, it's, it's done with such thoughtfulness mm -hmm. and care as if it was like your family. Yeah. And then it's just the effort to just do what it takes. Make that extra ask. Take yourself out of the comfort zone. I mean, the first story you told me about how you guys met and the first ask, I have to start no. there because sure. I want to yeah. talk about that for a second. If you're, day one. Yeah. if you're willing to, day go ahead. one. Day one. June, Let's go into June day one. June 17, this is great. 2013. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I get, a, I get a text from Lewis. What are the chances you can pick up some shaving cream and razors? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I could do this. So brand new to LA, go to the CVS down there. You just there. moved like two days before, yeah. the day before. Yep. Go 
go to the sketchy CVS, get stuck in the elevator. Pretty oh, sure yeah. someone had just peed in it before <laughs> I got in. Stuck in the elevator. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I told my bee right there and I'm, I'm stuck in this elevator. Finally get out, rush to get the shaving cream, the razors, rush over to your house and knock on the door. He answers, nothing but a bathrobe. <laughs> Proceeds to tell me he needs to shave his entire body. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's it's going to be so an adventure. Interesting. Yeah. So fill everybody in on what you were doing. Because yeah, so, I at know, the time, so at yeah. the time I was uh, part of an emotional intelligence workshop with Chris Lee in L.A. And we had to do an experiment to essentially shed our ego and dress as something that we would be completely uncomfortable being seen as. And for me, that would be a girl at the time, right? So he said, okay, you need to shave your whole body, <laughs> makeup, put a wig on, like wear heels, wear a skirt, everything. So... This was an experience in a workshop that I was going through. This isn't like daily life. And uh, she just happened to be there the first day that it was happening. And I needed something right then. I didn't have a shaver because I was always uh, trimming my face with clippers. So I needed like to, to, to razor it. So, Do we have a picture of this that we could like post on the show notes page I and might share have a with photo everybody? Of me in the Tip, let's remember to put, yeah. potentially red do boa. that. I have a photo. With a red boa. Red boa. I think yeah. it's my first photo on my phone that I have because it was like transferred oh, over my man. last phone. Yeah, it was crazy. I think I was wearing a Speedo or like a bikini or something crazy. Anyways, oh, the things we do at School of Greatness. Yeah. So that was your first day. <laughs> yeah. That was your first day. Uh, we talked about what are the chances. Um, so 2013 was the first year. You came halfway through the year. I was in another apartment down the street. Mm -hmm. It was just a, we just had a kitchen table and a couple of mics set up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was the first podcast just launched five months before that yeah and had, had come people come over there I was doing over Skype still sometimes yeah a lot, audio a lot of uh, Skype calls and yeah. audio only at that, that was time it. Mm -hmm. this was still before podcasting was really a big thing and when did we move over here was that 2014 13 it was, July, it was that year the July end, it was like right, July like right around later yeah oh, it was so nice, like, that was one of my first tasks find like, to place. find the place that's right yeah well, you had we, done this the transformational training where literally right after that because you had the big podcast where you shared with the world yeah, yeah. you know yeah. what you had gone through and overcome and I was and, here when I did that mm -hmm. and, yeah and that was powerful you know I mean that was like probably within a month like a lot was yeah. happening at that time. No, was it was, it was, it was a later, little further in. Later in the year. Yeah. Probably later. in October or something. Yeah, it was interesting. That yeah. was 2013? Mm -hmm. 13. Yeah, and so one of your first opportunities was to figure out like what's a good vent, uh, house or apartment mm -hmm. or a condo. And we found, you found Dominic. Yep. Who we've been friends with now for five, six years. Yep. He went through the same workshop. Uh, like everyone we did, uh, we know went through that, and um, he found us this place. I guess you were looking. He at other was, places yeah. First. We were looking at other places. This wasn't even on the market. He wasn't going to put this on until construction was done. But right. Dominic was friends with the neighbor who knew about this place yeah. and said, "There's a pocket listing, right?" Mm -hmm. And you used to do real estate, mm -hmm. so you knew all the whole business. Mm -hmm. And I came. I remember we went to other places, and I didn't like any place. No. So like and you didn't like it. You're like, eh, it's no, it was not. Yeah. And we came here and we just stayed here for like an hour mm -hmm. looking out the view. Yep. We've been here ever since. Mm -hmm. And yep. then we built out the studio in the next this, few years. This has changed quite a few times. Yeah. This was just a white box and now it's really evolved into, you know, what it is today. So that was the first year, first half a year. Anything else that year? Then we did a big uh, holiday, house holiday bash. House holiday bash. Yes. We had like 60, 70 people. There was here, a, lot of people. a lot of people. Yes. First year. So you got to tell the story about the champagne story it's, it's hilarious you have to because it just it gives a little insight into sarah's wit and the like little insight sure, about yeah us. well how, you how literal, literal very how literal, literal you can yeah. be sometimes yeah, yeah. i may have Listen overindulged in some champagne and then the next day when i <laughs> came i was like oh who was pouring champagne down my throat and you were like who was pouring <laughs> champagne down your throat and, and but we were just still getting to know each other and i'm like no, I was just kidding. Oh, you know, so I'm like, teasing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was. That's funny. Yeah. Okay. In 2014, uh, what I have here is we launched School of Greatness Academy. So you were still the only one working with me for a yeah. while. Yeah. I, think I brought someone else on to kind of try to run operations. It wasn't a good fit. 
we launched School of Greatness Academy year one in 2014. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was 2013, you were shedding your, your old business. You had yep. sold your yeah. previous That's business. Right. I sold my business yep. to my own partner. Yep, to your old business partner, and yeah. boom. And, and then 2014, Well, the podcast new. started growing, and people said, hey, we want to like be a part of a community. We want more training. Mm -hmm. So we created a course. It was a six-month program mm -hmm. that now is an eight-week program. Mm -hmm. So we did that for a half a year. People loved it. Yeah. That core community has been... A lot of them are still friends still, today. Still, I know. I remember yeah. the names because that's Colin, what we were. Yep. Alyssa, like all these people who've been around. Claire, the we, yeah. yeah. That's when we were like doing T-shirts, yeah. T-shirts, mailing them, hand mailing them, sticker like bumper stickers, sticker. Everything. Yes. That was a created blast. the school greatness T-shirts. T-shirts, the My brand, crash everything. course, and Pantone. So many people, I remember that. So many people have gone on from that uh, first round of Soga and launched books and done mm -hmm. TED talks and launched their businesses mm -hmm. and so many cool things that they've done. Mm -hmm. So it's been fun to watch that journey. Um, what else do we have? I saw my first book deal in 2014. The book came out 2015. Mm -hmm. So that was a cool win for me to, mm -hmm. to experience my first big book. And you were part of that. For the team, really. Yeah. I mean, when yeah, you're, cool. and then making New York Times bestseller list. That was a like cool moment. That, I mean, the book, whole yeah. team. I still remember calling you guys. I was in Denver. Mm -hmm. We were all just like waiting, watching the number, like mm -hmm. waiting for the release. That was crazy. So that was 2015. We started it in 2014. We also started a webinar course. And that really started to take off as well, teaching people how to run webinars. But 2015, the book came out, and that was like our whole lives mm -hmm. for six months. It took so much time. So you were on the team, experience. right? I just yes, started. Yeah, just year. started. Right before the book launch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you had you had a significant team. I think you had a team of five. I think, uh, Brittany, Brittany, Christine, Asia. Christine, Asia. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. and someone else or no? No, no, I don't think so. Yeah, that was cool. I think we had just some agencies with like. Um, ads or something yeah in PR web and graphics or uh, yeah I didn't know that we had that we had, we had a PR graphic team. designer yeah PR but we didn't even really work with like a paid, no, a paid acquisition Brittany agency. was yeah. doing Brittany Facebook was running, ads yeah, originally doing yeah. Facebook True. ads yeah that was a big year because it was just a lot of work mm. I was traveling around the country we were just trying to, we were saying yes to everything yep yeah yeah. A book tour. I was doing interviews like yeah. crazy no was he was doing all that it was like oh and we're gonna do like a 15 city book tour I'm like Oh great! That Who's planning that? You and, were. <laughs> yeah. Oh me. Okay, great. I said, yeah. start calling up bookshops. Yes. Right? Yeah, and we Call just well, we found people like you. You had made a post oh, yeah. about people who could host, and then well, whoever in those cities yeah. we collaborated with, and that, that was, was four crazy. years ago, huh? Man, it doesn't feel like four lots years. Lots happened. Yeah. Lots happened. Almost October, four mm -hmm. years ago, it'd be. Okay. So you joined the team. We launched the book. That was pretty much the main thing of that year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When did I go to? Um, Spain was that 2014? Yes, yeah, Spain. I went and played professional handball for a little bit in Spain in 2014. 2015, the book came out, book tour. I'm sure there was other stuff that year, but that was the main. Yeah, highlight. that was the main. The press leading up to it, and then after the book tour. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot. We built some online courses and we stuff did like courses, that at that time. You yeah. know, continue the to expand seven figure webinars. Yep. We yeah. started doing the podcast three times a week that that year, yeah. I believe. Yep. Is that when went to video? 16. 16. 16. You made the commitment. Tiff came on board yeah. right at the beginning of 2016. Is that right? February. Yes. January, February. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 2016, we had the summit that year. It was the first year. You guys remember that? First Southern year, Theater. That was crazy. Yes. Yeah. We had no clue what we were doing. We just said, let's do this mm -hmm. cool conference and bring yeah. everyone around the world together That's and it. make it an inspiring experience. We had no clue. That was a lot of stress. Yeah, but energy. I think that's almost so one of my fun. favorite hi or the highlight of these six years was the completion of year the first one, one summit. Really, the completion? Why? Yeah, just because not knowing what we were up to Everybody or how, was, like, we're just so naive, like, oh, yeah, this sounds great. And just, like, all the work and then just the core team and just being, you know, because, of uh, you know, we're all remote and so mm -hmm. we're... Coming together, We're coming cool. together yeah. and just the accomplishment of that. and Bonding, mm -hmm. experience. It's great. So many things yeah. were last minute. We're just like figuring it out behind the scenes and that's 20 again, seconds before yeah. and we just made it happen somehow. And charm we trust. And that's, that's, the, that's, that's the magic of this team. And yeah. you, yeah. Yeah. that, you know, we believe that somehow, we can pull it off. And somehow it, we pull it off. We do. We could probably repair for everything a lot better, but 
we always make yeah, it work. No, I mean, in, in these years too, it was growth. We were checking out new opportunities for our business because, you know, I mean, you just continued to evolve and grow over time. Right. We brought products and courses in based off of demand. We had people asking for this, and then you're like, all right, team, let's go create this. We had people saying, let's get together. At, you know, and really, Summit of Greatness was born because you had such a powerful, and I, I remember you telling me about it, you had such a powerful connection of seeing people in person because of the, after your School of Greatness book mm -hmm. launch, you met everybody individually and you were so impacted. Your heart was so impacted. You're like, I'm absolutely physically drained, but I've never been filled up yeah. more in my mm -hmm. life. It's crazy. And I have to duplicate this. And then that year, you know, Kat, your sister Catherine, mm -hmm. who is our event planner, um, we went in 2015 to World Domination Summit, That's which right. is where you spoke, yeah, which big. is a powerful keynote. Mm -hmm. It's online. I mean, we should probably add that link in there because that's just a beautiful keynote. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I was just like, this is, I mean, you on stage in that moment yeah. was great. You had, you know, sold from stage and spoken at some smaller events, but that stage was like, wow, I mean, Kat and I are sitting there in tears and we're yeah. like, everybody else is in tears and watching you speak, you know, about this you know, topic and about your life. And, uh, so I think, again, Summit was born from just you having gone through the School of Greatness book launch and then going, I just want to get everybody together mm -hmm. and I want to bring it to my hometown. You yeah. want to give back to your hometown because a lot of what you want to do is always going back to your roots, you know, and mm -hmm. that's, I think the Ohio grown in you is just like, yeah. I want to give back to my community. I want to give back where I can. So you brought it back to C bus and that's, that's actually where we met. So, so it's, fun. it's yeah. like close to my heart. So I'm so happy we're there every year. Some of the greatness this year is what? September 5th September to the 7th. September 5th to the 7th. Yeah. Get yeah. your tickets. That's it. Sarah will be there. Give her a hug. Yes. Sarah will be there. Sarah's still on. <clears throat> Even though she's she's technically leaving her current position, you're staying on through Summit of Greatness, yeah. which, I mean, if you guys are going to come there, give Sarah a big hug yes. for me. That's because it. she has created so much for this podcast community. And uh, mm. I'm going to celebrate you this entire time. That's we it. bring it back to you every time. 2016, we did the Summit. We also launched... Uh, we sold the Mask of Masculinity book deal. We launched the Legacy Course, mm. and we launched the Greatest Mastermind at the end of the year. So yeah. that was another big year. It's a lot. It's just growth. Mm -hmm. Opportunity, again, based on demand. We had people asking for this, people asking for that. You know, they wanted the Mastermind opportunity to work closer one-on-one yeah. -on -one with you because we really so. didn't have that. All we had was courses, mm -hmm. which is video trainings of you, and then we had a couple office hours with some yeah. of our courses where they get a virtual group call. And uh, now here we are. I mean, but all the while he's getting pulled in a million different directions. Remember yeah. the like different uh, pilots? Oh my gosh! Like the you takeover, set, yeah, you know, remember going on set. Mm. You came on set for a, a few different things. That was kind of, yeah. that was cool, huh? But yeah, it, none of those led to anything. But but all behind the scenes of all the things that yeah. are working, there's many things that Aren't you're working. working, trying to make happen or exploring, and. You know, it just working your magic yeah. behind the scenes, yeah. having conversations, seeing what's possible. You never know what's going to work until you actually right. do it. And we've done a lot of things that didn't work. We just don't show those. A lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think we've done a lot of things that, that worked. It's a matter of then, what do you want to continue and build yeah. your business around? And Double that's down the, that's what's really <clears throat> happened in the last couple of years. Because we can make us. anything work at some mm -hmm. point. I mean, we're just there. A couple of weeks ago, we we had our offsite where we were just diving into what our core business is, yeah. and it's like we we have this option problem of options there's so much we could do yep. but it pulls us in so many different directions and inevitably pulls you in so many different directions and bottom line is we just get back to our core business is podcasting mm -hmm. that's it um, and that's why we're here and this we're show. here to stay yeah 2017 we did the second year of Summit of Greatness we launched the Mask and Masculinity book tour which was intense but we had a better footing on what to do because we mm -hmm. had a lot of structure from the previous one yep. previous book launch yep. we launched another book a month later Millionaire Morning. Yeah. <laughs> we launched our monthly membership Inner Circle, yeah. which has been incredible. And we did, uh, we finished the Mastermind year one. Is that right? We finished it in year That's one? That's right. 20, um, and that was a, what was the biggest highlight from the year for you, 2017, with everything? Second year summit, the second book, membership, Mastermind completion. I think it's the, the Mastermind. You know, having was fun. been involved with that, and um, like Matt said, we have Kat, your sister, an amazing event planner, and seeing her action at Summit and being able to take that away and, you know, recreate experiences for the Mastermind members here in L.A. and mm -hmm. really taking the lead on that and getting stretched in that capacity. Um, you yeah. crushed it. 
You absolutely crushed it. That's Every it single fun. weekend you've created for the, the, that mastermind community it's been has magical. been top notch. I mean, people are always fun. asking us like, what do you do? How do you do it? It's unbelievable. And I mean, beyond the members, they're like, oh, give us your blueprint on how you, you know, conduct these. And, Find I mean, a Sarah. Right here. Find a Sarah. Right here. She's the one that does it all. Really? Very, your attention to detail and your ability to really connect with each mastermind member is what makes the difference for them, I think. Because you just, you know their name, you're very thoughtful of what they need, and that's, that's really powerful. Yeah. 2018, uh, third summit, we moved to Ohio Theater. Was that last year we moved? Mm -hmm. That's right. So we had a, we did the same event in a new space three times yeah, the size. Yeah, it's like starting over. I Felt mean, like it was, yeah. Yeah. It, did. it was. Yeah, it did. It was a lot. <laughs> so, but it was also very exciting. It was just a beautiful venue. Yeah, it, it's, it never fails to, to be exciting yeah. and, you yeah. know, still get that. Nervous. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I'm excited uh, yeah. this year. Yeah. Just to be in person. It's going to be amazing year, this year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, last year we had Wycliffe, that closing oh party. Gosh, it was insane. Years before, DJI Re, like just it's gonna be closing it with just a dance party. I don't know. It's, so much it's like fun. you have this amazing consumption of these keynote speakers that are just filling your soul and with possibilities and opportunities for your life to mm -hmm. grow. And then to just celebrate it at the end. It's yeah. amazing. It's unbelievable. Gosh, I think we need to have a dance party for Sarah. I don't know. Should. I can't keep, Put keep up with tips. So we're going to bring you up on stage and we're going to no. make you dance in front of everybody. No. Take Let's you out of your comfort zone. Crowd, no. crowd surf. No. Crowd surf. No. Yes. Yes. No. Surf. We're going to make you crowd Sarah surf. Rose and I are going to pick you up. <laughs> we're going to toss you into the crowd. Uh, yes. Uh, so that was 2018. Um, we, or that was 20, yeah, 2018. Third year summit. We launched talk show on Facebook. Uh, inspiring life with Lewis Howes. That was an interesting experience. And it's amazing. It was, great. It was cool. You came out for one of the shows. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, one came day. Out to New York. You shoot in Brooklyn. That was an awesome experience. It was great. I mean, to, I mean, I mean. Here's the thing. The one thing that just resonated with me is, as a as a small team of entrepreneurs, we can get so much done so much more quickly. Yeah. So when you're kind of like waiting around for the process of that, that was mm -hmm. the, the most daunting thing. Is like just this waiting game. All right. Lawyers TV's conversing, yeah. conversations. Yeah. It feels like the reason I love this is because we have such a the ability and power to just move and make massive changes quickly in a business. And that's where I think, man, I, I don't know. I, it's just like the next TV show we do, I say we just do it ourselves. Yeah. You know, I like partner it. with somebody great, but. I like it. I, like I know it. we went big. Facebook <laughs> was an amazing partner. I mean, we had a lot of fun, a lot of learning from that experience. Yeah. And I just feel like. Let's just do it ourselves. Exactly. That's how I, I always go back to that. Like, let's do what do we ourselves. want, you know? Yeah. yeah. You have a partner, you have to, you know, create the win-win. So, yeah. So we did that. We had the Mastermind second year. And then that was 2018. What else was in last year? What else was big? The talk show took up a lot of time and energy. That was a lot of work. Plus, you doing lot, the, yeah, you this was all while doing the podcast three times a week over the last three years, four mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So. And everything just hanging out there waiting tentative till yeah. you know we need this answer to make that answer and yeah it, and it's always focusing lot. on the podcast the one thing we're not talking about is the continuation of the podcast three episodes a, a week. week uh so we had to get ahead you know for that time when you were going to be always. in brooklyn new york uh the shoot and we just didn't know how long and then at the at the last minute we realized our team is the the sole support on launching on this platform. All the marketing, the promotion. Everything. We, I know we talked about this yeah. on our last you know, coffee conversations, but everything, last minute they're like, oh, it's you guys. Yeah. And, and we were like, well, we had no idea. We weren't contracted to do it, but you know what our team did? We yeah. just said, okay, let's suck it up, let's organize this plan, yeah, and let's launch, launch this as best as we can. And Do and our best. I think we did great. We I did think great. we did really great. Inspired a lot of people with that show. I mean, the comments were pretty awesome to see. It was amazing. Yeah. So that was 2018. And then 2019, this year, um, we're working on another book. I've been traveling a ton this year. I think I've been to, I don't know, seven or eight countries already. Handball. Handball. Um, and we're working on Summit of Greatness year four, writing the next book, podcast growth. So many meetings. Oh my gosh. So many TV This has been the year of meetings. Oh I've just. It's crazy. All my free time is meeting. Yeah. So. It's all good stuff. We're really getting to know people in Hollywood, but um, it's been interesting. But you also started, t you told us like three months ago that you're transitioning out. Mm -hmm. So this has been a, a short year for you. Yeah. And that's, 
that's your life in the last six years. That sums it up. And you've been in complete support through the process, supporting with us finding that transition, uh, finding the right person. So, I mean, I'm sincerely grateful for that because, I mean, you, you could have just said, hey, I'm out, guys. No way. And you always continue to hold us high, lift this business up, you know, the school of greatness, 418 Media, Lewis Howes, all of us. So, boom. Oh. It's been my tagline. That's it. Keeping Lewis Howes alive since 2013. <laughs> yes, I like that. So, what are, uh, what are some things that are coming up for you? What's, um, what's some advice you could give to other people on other teams? If they're an assistant on another team, what, what should they really think about if they're wanting to be an assistant or if they just want to be on a team for a company? What advice would you have? To be a great player, team player. Yeah, I just think doing whatever it takes and whatever your title may be, you know, that that might mean you do other things. I mean, I scrub toilets if, if you know, a podcast guest was coming in, vacuum the floor, you know, I whatever it takes to get mm -hmm. the job done or what the, um, what your, your team members need. So it's just... Right. What's been the biggest challenge year after year? The challenge is work, working with me, working with the team in this business, our mission, our vision. Yeah, I, I mean, they're challenges at the time because the you're a dreamer and you dream big and you continually stretch me and the team. And so the challenge at the time is Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Really, again? Are you going to try to pull this off in this, this time frame? Um, but then when we pull it off, it just feels good. Uh -huh. So the challenge really is just an opportunity for growth. What do you think was the biggest challenge you faced uh, internally over the last six years that you've now overcome and you're like, oh, I don't know why I was so stressed out about that one thing? Or um, I think just being on this podcast right now is <laughs> overcoming a lot the, of fears. Maybe but something in the first three, four years where you're like always stressed or nervous about, but now you're like, oh, it's no big deal. Just not feeling like, you know, I belonged in this world. You know, I, I had no idea what to expect coming into this, mm -hmm. but, you know, having a skill set of just being a supporter and, uh, you know, loving to cook, just loving to take care of people and being very nurturing you know, not having a skill set of, you know, podcasting or editing or, you know, a lot mm. of the uh, courses that we use and the, the programs and platforms we use, not having experience with those things and then thinking like, oh, I'm, I'm just, you know, the assistant or I'm not, I don't have that skill set. And so feeling like I didn't belong, but, mm. you know, realizing that all those little things matter and, you know, I support you at the highest level, which, you know, I got really clear in the, you know, leadership program that we did that I am a leader and, you know, through you, I've been able to impact mm -hmm. people and, you know, I'm proud of the work you do and I, I do feel like, you know, I've been um, a part of that and your yeah. movement and your mission. So it's given me the opportunity and you've given me a place and purpose. You know, I feel emotional, but yeah. It's, yeah. it's been amazing. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Okay. What questions do you have for Sarah, Matt? Oh, man. Questions? I what do you know. think would be helpful for people to hear? Oh, man. I think it'd be supportive to hear again that <clears throat> the contribution, you know, as Sarah was just saying, like, I didn't know these platforms, I didn't have experience in this, but I think just the willingness to do what it takes, like you said, the willingness to just insert the effort instead of the know-how at times wins out mm -hmm. almost all the time. In my experience with having people on your team, hire somebody who's just willing to do what it takes and has yeah. the effort. Effort wins out over, in my skill. mind, skill or intellect or experience at times. Because, I mean, I'm happy to allow somebody to learn and grow on the job and insert themselves in your business and really learn the business. It's kind of how I got to know this online you know, world and podcasting in general. I, didn't, I came from a corporate background. So um, I'm just, 
wondering what the question is, but I, I think the question for you is just, you know, what does it take in your heart to have that? What do you have to shed and let go of to just say, I'm all in? Mm. You know, what is, what is it taken for you? And what are the mental conversations you have with yourself? At times, I'm sure when you're like being asked, like, shoot, I gotta do this again, or gosh, mm. what, this again? Or man, I, I wanna resist, but what does that create for me? And I don't know, what's the mindset for you? What's your mental mindset coming into every day? You know, I know you have a very strong ritual and habit of waking up every morning and meditating. Mm -hmm. like, what is your mindset? I, I think that'd be really powerful to share if you're willing to. Well, it's shifted over the years just because my role, I mean, what I do today versus from day one, it right. has evolved. And I, you know, other than, you know, being a, shooting the podcast, I've been involved in almost uh, everything, you know, at, in some capacity. And, um, so it's it's just changed and transitioning from being um, more in studio to virtual and mm -hmm. the different roles. It's it's just changed, but I think the mindset again is just doing whatever it takes. How am I going to be in service today and also check my crap at the door? You know, mm. like mm. we all have bad days or personal things, but my role is to make every day a good day for you. So I just come in just like, how can I support? Whether it's a cup of coffee or, you know, booking your travel. So right. it's just <clears throat> seeing the need, seeing you, assessing you and... Going from there. Yeah. What well, you did really well is you always try to think like three, four or five steps ahead of me, mm -hmm. mm. which I think is very powerful for your position as opposed to needing to ask all the time something you're right. always thinking, okay, he's going to need this when he gets, when he lands in London, he's going to need this next. And mm -hmm. Yeah. If you had to ask me for something, I would take that look, guess feedback to myself. Like, oh man, I, <laughs> yeah. I so you did a really good job of that. Yeah. What was the greatest perks for you over the last six years? Just like benefits of being outside of like getting paid to do a job. What was like the, the perks? I think just seeing the amazing people come yeah. through these doors and sit in this seat and um, yeah. I also you learned like, a lot. You learned a lot listening to the podcast. Yeah. Going through personal challenges yourself or health or whatever it may mm -hmm. be at the time. We would have guests in and you would read their book or you would learn yes. and listen and you would apply it. You know, Wim Back Hoff in the day, every book. It. Yes. Yeah. Wim Hof has been huge. Uh, that practice for me personally. and Right. But you used to do all the research. You were the one mm -hmm. reading the books, writing read, the questions. Page to page, read each you of those books. every book mm -hmm. and would give me note cards where I would interview people. Yes. I remember that. Remember handwritten like, before the crazy. iPad? Handwritten note cards. Uh, handwritten like cards. Greatness. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's crazy. That mm -hmm. was like five years ago. Man. That was a while. Yeah, that was wow. a while ago. So you learned a lot as well just by right. Like, right. being just, part of the team. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off. What was no, I was going to say the, the Pencils of Promise trip. Oh, yeah. That was such a privilege. Um, the taking last day, this, but yeah. yeah, I mean that was. <laughs> I'll still take it though. That was <laughs> so we took. Oh, it was rough, but we took the team to Guatemala. Yes, Tiff, Tiff was there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Christine came, and then yeah, it was a fun time. What'd you What'd you experience there? Just the children. I mean, and even just I mean, the the community in general. Just having so little in way of material things, but the happiest people. Yeah. You could me. It was just it was fun, mind blowing, and also um, I believe it was the first school you built and dedicated to we, your we saw. mom. Yeah, yeah we saw. and getting to see that <clears throat> and the impact and just you know, I obviously know what you're up to and the impact you're making and you know, pretty big deal in my eyes. But you know, in the day to day, you just you don't really realize it and to see mm. you and the impact you're making and the people's feedback and you know um hearing the stories and the testimonials and yeah. how you've impacted their lives it's just like wow and in turn again i i feel that i've also had a part in that yeah, so you know that feedback to you i also take very personally and oh, that's cool that's good yeah so that was a perk what other perks who was your favorite guest actually oh, yeah there you go oh couple of guests Who's coming to mind? Well, one of my favorite interviews that it wasn't necessarily, it was before 
uh, we did in studio. Or actually, I might have met him. It was, I think it was when you were in the Santa Monica place, but um, Brendan Shop. You loved it. You were dying laughing. Because I, right? he really, they were giggling. Yeah, I just, was, I don't know. I saw a different side of Lewis. Like yeah. any anyone who funny. could get him to like laugh, funny... like real, really genuinely laugh like that, yeah. what I just. <laughs> I did something different happy. with that too. I remember I was like, let me find 10 things in common between us. Yes, that's right. I remember yes, that specifically. Yes. I should do this with everyone, but I really researched and I was like, what are the things that we have in common? Because he was like a birthday, his birthday was like the day or two after mm -hmm. mine. We both played football. There was like a few things really quick and I was like, let me find 10 things. And um, we were just dying laughing. Yeah, it was the, the banter. The banter. I don't know. It was guy. just really funny. Yeah. And he, he's blown up since then. He's got like an HBO or Showtime special and awesome. touring around the world and all this stuff. So um, so he's one of your favorites still. The favorite podcast. I mean, yeah. just. It's funny. That just always, because I get asked that a lot, you know, but that. Brendan Shop, there you go. Yeah. Just try to get him back on. That's cool. What, who else? Favorite female podcast? I really like the Barbara Corkin. Oh, yeah. Recently. She was, again, she's funny. Like, I, I just like the humor, you know, yeah. but um, obviously a lot of value as well. So. Right. Huh. What were some of the challenges that you overcame? With the podcast or just in general with the team? The, six the years, role? yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think it's just, it will always remain a challenge. It's just the. Sometimes not lack of preparation, but your your big ideas in really tight Short turnaround. Yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. The runway. The, it's like yeah. trying to take yeah. off a seven forty seven <laughs> in a small, tiny airport. Feet. Yeah. yeah, it's like uh, let's find a way. But again, it it always Fair works out. Something. Yeah. What was uh, was there ever a time you wanted to quit? They like honestly wanted to quit, not just like oh this is a bad day. I'm get, I'm out of here, but. Until this year. Yeah, really no, no. No, I mean. Did I ever push you too much? That you were like, this guy's a jerk. I'm out of here. Not that you're a jerk, but yeah, you'd push me a yeah. lot. I mean, it's just, again, the, the big dreamer, you know? Like, just big dreams that, you know, we had to. Uh -huh. Give us some dirt. Give us something, you know? It's. Or a funny moment, or blow behind the scenes. I used to scare Sarah all the time for years. Yes, yeah, oh, I'm super she's jumpy. Super jumpy. As I was scared. Know, like, we filmed. <laughs> that film seems like, I mean, I think <laughs> I could just be sitting there, like, and I, I scream, remember that a lot. bloody murder. Screaming. Yeah, I remember that a lot. Yeah, I just walk into the studio like in the morning, mm -hmm. you know, just listen to my phone or on a phone call and. I'd like just I'd turn the corner world. and you just turn around and just, I mean, that, that scream <laughs> is like a bloody so loud. murder <clears throat> scream. What were some of the things, maybe three or four things that you noticed over the last six years that really um, allowed our business to grow and allowed for growth to happen? Whether it was with me or how our team worked together, what were some things that you just noticed that maybe I'm not even aware of, or maybe I am, but that would be powerful for people to listen to? Mm, I think bringing on Matt. Game changer. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. And it's huge. Thank you. Yeah. Why was yeah. that powerful? I think because he was able to rein you in in, a, in an organized oh, cool. way to, mm -hmm. you know, take your ideas and make them a reality. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's obviously all your input and stuff, but he, he made it happen in an organized fashion and, you know, reined in the troops and... Um, organize it better. Yeah. Because I was trying to organize team, manage team, and be the creative content yeah. person, and it was just a lot for me. Yeah. And then so I, I think like, that allowed you yeah. the freedom to focus on what you do best. Mm -hmm. And and there was also a shift with Lewis, and I don't know when exactly it was. I really couldn't even say, but you really like wouldn't pop off, or like you would just be. Calmer and. I used to be angrier. Not a, like, like just. Uh, Here's the thing. I'll, I'll jump, share this. You wouldn't pop off, but I could see like, <laughs> it, like you're so tenacious and relentless. Yeah. And it could be a text message, and it could be something like this. Like I'll, I'll just come up with some random example that's just out there. But say a podcast episode goes up, and like I don't know, there's the wrong link or something like that, and it's rarely happened over time. But when it does happen, you're just like. 
so why did it happen? Like, and what do we got to do? And like every single question you have is trying to get to the core problem and then relinquish that problem so it doesn't repeat. And I would say, what do we need to do that this never happens again? Mm -hmm. But yeah. you, you tend to sometimes like just repeat the same question and it's like, we the gave the answer. <laughs> but I, I understand, like, yeah. it's just that, I don't know, it's that tenacious part of you that's like, let's just make sure we continue to elevate and grow and yeah. do better next time. And Not these know. little mistakes all the time, yeah. Yeah. I can't stand little mistakes. Yeah. For some reason. But I've gotten more patient with what you're saying. Yeah, I, I just, he's just more mellow. Yeah. Huh. More mellow. And, and until it's like happened multiple times in a row, yeah. then I'm still like, yeah, right, there's, guys, a, there's a, a breaking, few scenarios there's that a breaking where I'm point like, for me. Yeah. Where it's just not acceptable anymore, especially when I'm like paying someone a certain amount. I'm like, okay, why are we making these mistakes? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something I need to work on, but. I, you have. Yeah. I, I feel like you have. That's good. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So you've seen the patients. Yeah. What else have you seen that makes our business work really well and stand out? And... The consistency of the podcast, like non-negotiable, yeah. three episodes and, you know, doing whatever it takes to get the guests and yeah. um, just always leading with love and how you can be of service. Mm. And... I mean, I guess that's just been pretty much a consistent, I mean, really, I don't know, just seeing the team grow, Tiffany. I think our, our team meetings have really been impactful. You know, we really started, I remember when we came on, I don't even know if you guys had team meetings, but I was like, we gotta have a weekly team meeting. We gotta have a yeah. weekly. We like, had, remember we had <laughs> your, we, your mom, Ali, me and you, we just, we were sitting at the table, we're like, all right guys. What are we gonna do? Yeah, what are we gonna do? What are we like, gonna do? Was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, but I got something in the oven, I had laundry going, like, <laughs> it took a while for those to stick, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. Now it's non-negotiable. So we need to connect as a team. And, so it's so impactful. And powerful. the challenges, and you brought along the huddle, which is great yeah. because the end of the week, right? End yeah, week. and yeah. that that's kind of where you're not there, and we can really speak freely, <laughs> talk yeah. about all <laughs> air our grievances, or you know, just <laughs> yeah, really talk about real the talk. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you you would really realize you guys are lying to me on the team calls. Yeah. No, no, it's just more grateful. I need to I need to tune in on a here's here's the thing. On a huddle and listen it, in and see what's really happening one day. You can listen any anytime. Yeah. We'd love to have you there. I would love to have you there, but I just realized it's always trying to allow you to have the space to create, do what you do yeah. best, which is create, be the visionary, be the master networker, like mm -hmm. focus on your superpowers. Like I just see you on team calls and it's my experience of you like on team calls like if it's not laser in the point I and within 15 out. minutes you're just like <laughs> I gotta go do uh, I gotta go take yeah. the action and then you're on your yeah. phone it's like well because I'm no, trying to take the action we can tell we right know there. and it's like we lost him we lost it's like if you didn't get it in like Soon. he's gone yes. see you next week because yes. <laughs> he's gone yeah what you, are, you just see the look what are two or three things uh, that you observed in the last six and a half years or really this year that you, what advice would you give us moving forward without you here on how we can improve and be better? I mean, it's, it's just going to be better just by way of, you know, I'm really excited for the new team members and, you know, the skill set that she has. And, um, but just the communication, keeping the huddles, keeping the team calls going and mm -hmm. just everyone being on the same page, you know, and Summit bringing everybody together. We did, we had the one, uh, or we did a few times, the like team outings, we did the helicopter ride. That and, was fun. Yeah. More of those are good. I think so, just to have the, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was before. Were you there? No, you there? no, Sorry. she was just like. Before my time. Christine and Brady. I think yeah, it's yeah. yeah. before me. Yeah. yeah. Um, but doing stuff like that and let, you know, yeah. you know, everyone working remotely. Um, I'm surprised. Helicopter ride? You didn't get sick? I got a little. <laughs> you get like motion sick, <laughs> sickness, don't you? Yeah, it was. It wasn't that bad. Remember the Disney I trip? Was kinda... Oh my gosh. Oh, the Disney, Disney trip was trip. so much fun. We were having a blast. You and I yes. oh. at, at Disney drinking beers. <laughs> I was sick having a good time. nurse's office for uh, five hours. Mickey's oh, infirmary. Oh, I felt so bad. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You were there for four hours just laying in the infirmary. No one else is in this infirmary. No little kids, like scraped knees. Maker, right? There was like no one there. It's just, just, like, just Lewis. The fetal position. Literally. Little kids ride. Sweating. Uh, like you just were sweating. Oh man. You just could not get out of this 
funk, this motion sickness. I mean, Blue Angels is worse. Was off. Yeah. Oh. Blue Angels is Oh my worse. gosh, driving back in the Tesla. <laughs> I was so he's, out of it. You just laid in the car like. <sighs> I know, he's oh, hot, but he's cold. Hot, cold. <laughs> like, like you were just oh. puffing like. Oh my gosh. Oh whole, man. I felt like I was on Mars for days. Yeah. I just felt like so out of it. No, how about the Tesla when <laughs> it wasn't charged and we're like, how are we going to get through the desert? <laughs> we're like, <laughs> there was no charging station. We're like, what do we do? Well, we, we found one, but we were lucky to get there. But then Barely. I'm on the, like, right when I, I'm on hold forever with customer service, finally get the line, drops. We had a dead zone. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're like, can AAA actually give us a boost? Like I'm a sure portable that, battery? But we were like 2% away or so. I mean, it from was. The, yeah, from the station? The yeah. Tesla was like down to, because it was <laughs> El Centro. They were trying to coast down the hill. where their, their base is. El we're like, we, yeah, we're trying to go down the hill. We're like, the, charge up the battery. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. So we charged it, huh? Was I yeah. just passed out the whole we, time? We made it. The whole way back. Yeah. yeah. Passed out. yeah. And I remember I was passed out during the charging time too, I guess. No, that's when we went to the mall. It was the that, mall. It was, that was on the that was on the way there. Yes. Oh god. That was on, on the way, way there. Yeah. On the way back. Because you had to speak like the next day. Oh my god, it was yeah. miserable. Yeah. Cause we t- we took I took <sighs> the train back. Mm-hmm. Were you in San Diego at that time? Yeah. We took it back with Tiff and I took the train back. Yeah. Oh man. That was miserable. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, reel reel it back in. Here, let's reel it back in. So, other other advice for us moving forward. How can we grow? How can we be better? Well, a little preparation. I was gonna say that. Saying. I didn't want to put the words in your mouth because I, I I saw the p- 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 you were puckering like preparation. Like, like that's it. Please. Like that's yeah. so important. I mean, at, when we can, I think you know we've gotten really good at just pulling stuff off. And we make it work, but I think there's room to really elevate the next level with, you know, control the controllables and things are still going to come up and things will be last minute. But I get it. You're pulled in so many directions, so many exciting things, but prepare, prepare, you know, love it. Okay. I I always say this about Lewis. He's just like. He thrives. He's like a fourth I, I quarter. Think you both, He's like a uh, bottom of the ninth. Like I want to catch the final touchdown pass to win the game in the corner of the end zone, fully stretched out. Yeah. Like you, it's like you pr- have prepared for those moments, yeah, and yeah. you just thrive in those moments. Okay. There's been a couple times I've seen you like getting ready to speak from stage, and we'd even start preparing early on. The team is supporting and conversations mm-hmm. and getting slides together and all this. And I'm like, what am I going to say? And then <laughs> yeah. last minute you're yeah. like, ah, so what, what are we doing? And like, so we just got used to just also preparing in the wings yeah. for every possible mm-hmm. moment. Yes, and every that's, scenario. That's where again, just you have supported in such a way once you learn how Lewis works. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's it. At the end of the day, I mean, every key person on this team is here to support you, mm-hmm. obviously as a business owner. Um, and we just need to grow and find ways to work around it, you yeah. know? I mean, that's it. But preparation is key, obviously, in any business yeah. to really be successful, you so know? Prepare. <laughs> the whole time he's like, not gonna happen. But it's like, <laughs> here's the challenge. It's like when you got like a, a Michael Jordan, <clears throat> yeah. who is just, can hit the final shot, can like just pull it off. Yeah, it was... I mean, <laughs> even some of the greatness, like you're like, I don't know what I'm gonna say. And I got my walkie on backstage and you're like, I'm like, all right, here's some talking points. This is what we've been talking about. I'm pulling up my phone, like Google Sheet. I'm like, all right, this is what we got. What about talking about this? He's, you're just like, I got it. It okay. just came to me. Yeah. And I'm just like, what? Yes. Like, I'd yes. be losing my mind. What speech you did, the five? five? Like Bulletproof, was that it? Or no? No, we, I think you did another version oh, of it. But here at the Wonderlust. Wonder, it was a book We sign. did the greatness event here. We're like, what are you going to do? He's like, like, just give me a few minutes. He goes to his room and no, meditates. We were, and then we were driving to the facility and I came over there in the car. Oh, well. I think that's what happened. Meditating was another speech. It was like the five the, G's of something, said, right? Yes, five, five G's. I just made it up. Yeah. But they all worked extremely well when I was yes. thinking about them. I was like, okay, who this? <laughs> it was so, I'm like, <laughs> but people, I didn't believe he really just made that up. But people loved it mm-hmm. and I saw yeah. other people taking the same content and using it in other places. Yeah. Because I, you know, done a lot of work before, a lot of speeches and had these exercises so I just kind of put them all together mm-hmm. in, in yeah. a format that worked for this audience. So. I don't recommend it. It's not the. It's not it doesn't make you feel peace. Yeah. But for some reason, like it brings me to focus. In the last minute, I focus in those moments, and yeah. I don't know. Well, it's just part of you. You've the you've pressure's on. It. You've you've harnessed your own 
weakness into was, a strength. I was always I mean, a last minute guy. Yeah. Last minute Lewis. <laughs> in school. <laughs> last minute Lewis. I did not think of that one. I don't know. Last why. minute Lewis. In school, I didn't start writing my five page papers until like three hours before. We would have a, two weeks wow. to do the research and write the paper, and I would just pull an all nighter, write it a few hours before, and somehow, you know. Pass a class. I think so. you, you must be thinking about it. I mean, it must be like Roy yes. Vaden's book, Procrastinate on Purpose, yeah. or something like that. There's a pieces of in my mind. Something you, you're, you're, you harness you're your procrastination oh, yeah. into somehow There's working for you. There's a little seed in there somewhere. I mean, yeah. It's crazy. Oh man. Wow. Well, back to Hold Sarah. Back. Any any final back questions for Sarah. for Sarah, Matt? Or any final I, thoughts? I don't know. I think we got through a lot of the inner circle questions about behind the scenes of our team. Um, we're happy to share anything more. Obviously. Um, and I think I'm just curious. What's next for Sarah Ooh, Livingstone? There we go. I don't know. That remains to be seen. You know. You got a lock and key on yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, come on, <laughs> give us something. Uh, well, I really want a family, and you know, so it's getting clear on that and what that's going to look like. You are going to be unbelievable. Yes. I mean, you with Bella, when you are here last week, staying with oh, us. Oh, Bella's the cutest. Aww. I mean, Baby Bella. she fell in love with you within two seconds. She just sat next to you and was like, your little buddy. I know, it's cute because we always you. FaceTime, you know, and yeah. then she she's you, like, huh? she's out of the screen. Like, she, yeah. she's she was, she came to you pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, like that. Yeah. Faster than me. She takes her like she, she twenty takes, minutes with me. I mean, but now you're just so in. you're just yeah, so giant. Just like, <laughs> like when you probably walk up to her, she's just like. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Like it takes her a second, oh, but then man. when you start throwing her up in the air, she won't like, get away from she's me. She's like more, she more. She does this thing as this more. more, yeah. She more. won't get it off of me after I do that. She won't. And I'm she like, gets... I'm exhausted. I'm like, <laughs> she cries oh, yeah. when, when when you leave. Oh, she I cried when you left. Oh, oh. It's my family. Oh, my, Mama Sarah. Yeah. Mama Sarah. Well, any final questions, Matt? Any final questions you have for us? We're gonna see you in the next few months, but I mean, I don't know. I'm just. Proud of you for getting on the podcast. Yes, I think it's, it's such a tremendous jump. value to just talk behind the scenes, pull back the curtain a little bit, and just share that. I mean, it's it's been an unbelievable six years. I've known you for that time because Lewis enrolled us in that mm -hmm. transformational uh -huh. uh, workshop back then. I'll never forget. You, you know, guys went through a lot together. What are the chances? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we really were friends before we actually yeah. started working together. Because you so, weren't working. With us, yeah, were you? Were you on the team? No, no, no it was, it we was almost a year same, and a half before. We were in the same wow, yeah. so you were just friends. We'd go to mm -hmm. Rock and Riley's, yeah, play yeah. shuffleboard, play wow. shuffleboard, yeah, we would. That's interesting. Yeah, so you guys knew each other for a while before you came on. We, yeah, we did. We what was did. that like being yeah. friends and then having Matt work with you and kind of also managing part of your work experience? Was that a challenge at times? He, he came in just super sly and just like. Hey. Just, just here to support. And then it became <laughs> then like, through the hammer down. Hammer, yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, who is this? I, was, so I just kind of, I like, kind of came in here like, mm, yeah. I'm just gonna observe, like, and then I'm like, all right, we gotta, peak. now we gotta take some. Let's yeah. go, let's go. Yeah. You guys had some challenges at different times, right? You guys mm -hmm. had some like, well, you it had wasn't a like this, for me, Chippy. Chippy. Right? You're just telling. But you guys had. You got me a mug. You got me a mug that said Chippy. It was like Christmas gift. I was like, I don't know whether to enjoy this or be insulted. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> How did you guys uh, handle conflict between each other and move past it where it didn't like resent certain things, you know, at times? The, the, the good old lingo from... Uh, MITT, from the, the workshop? I think it was just like... We would just talk. Like, yeah. We'd talk, talk it out. Talk about what the upset was. We wouldn't let it just kind of brood, uh -huh. you know? It's like, let's just get through it. Let's talk about it. And I don't know. That's your experience. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's like... Do we have to have a clearing? <laughs> <laughs> a clearing. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, good. Did you always get through it? Yeah. yeah. Of course. When were you most uh, pissed off with me? Was there anything I did or said or didn't do that you were super angry with me and you... I'm sure. Besides like little things, I guess, but was there ever a moment you're like, I'm really mad at him? Well, here's the challenge, because I'll just say this. I know that personal assistant, executive assistant is such a... Like her first point of contact and support is you, business second. Like mm -hmm. that's just, and everybody else is kind of business first. Obviously you are the focal point, but with the business in mind. So for me, I, I just remember a couple instances where it was like I came on and my whole 
identity was around shedding the stress of, you know, people management from right. you and making sure that any conversations needed to be had that were sensitive conversations were mine to be to oh, have right. with everyone. So there was like this part where I, I remember a couple times there was a I'd be talking to Sarah and she'd be like, Well, if Lou's upset, he could just talk to me. He could tell me about this. I just remember a couple times that there were like, I was yeah, like, so, there was a little so then I was like, all right, like, you know what? At the end yeah. of it, you guys talk about it, mm -hmm. but I would just be there to support in any possible way. Like even be yeah. in the room, like, what do we need to talk about? Kind of uh, yeah. We had one of those moments, didn't we? We did. Where Matt was like in the middle of both of us. What was it years ago, huh? Yeah, it was a few years ago. When was it? What happened? I don't even remember what happened. I, I can't recall either. But I, you I, were really I mad remember. at me or something. Uh, I was like therapist. I was like, remember? I just pulled out my notebook. I'm like, you don't remember? You remember? You oh, don't I remember. See? I don't remember what. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> you don't forget something like. Sarah never kidding. forgets. I do uh -uh. have a really good memory. Do you remember what this was? I can't remember where we were, but we had like a sit down. Let's finish off with a little talk. Juicy gossip. No, I want to talk about all the like. All do you remember the that moment or no? Huh? Yeah. Well, do you want to tell me later? Well, maybe. <laughs> just tell me later. <laughs> it's going to make me look bad. I don't know. No, no. I just want to talk about the how, good thing. How do we resolve that? I can't remember. We I remember. Did. Because we're strong and powerful yeah, people that work in the space of, of fixing and clearing yeah. and moving on, you know, creating a more powerful relationship than it was before, you know? Not, not having upset. And for me, yeah. and again, coming in with <clears throat> good energy is huge. And you're super sensitive to energy. Oh. If somebody's off that throws you off yeah. so um any issue we had we had to move through quickly yeah mm -hmm. so wow I feel, yeah yeah it's good yeah kind yeah. of firm be willing to have the hard conversations but like just outline what the request is what's the request going forward and mm -hmm. can you yeah. honor that request or not and then just try to keep moving. i think our keep dynamic's going. been really good if there's yeah. if there's ever been it's only An one time too. I remember. Yeah, one time. I don't remember what it was about, but I remember it vaguely. Well, I know what the trigger was, but I think overall there was just a lot of things leading up. Oh. You're just leaving everybody. <laughs> I, I feel bad for the listeners right now. But uh, no, it's we can all right. edit I won't, that. Yeah, I won't, I won't make you say. It's all good. Yeah, let's, let's leave it on a positive note. Again, this is a celebration um, of six years. Sarah Livingstone. Amazing. We appreciate oh, you. We acknowledge you. You're amazing. Couldn't have done this without you. Seriously. It's been yeah. incredible. It's been awesome. Yeah, it's been Thank amazing. You for the opportunity. It's sad. There's, there's a little piece of Lewis. I'm sad. Uh, there's a little Lily piece of us big... that's like, no. It's like, Sarah's part of our team. She's our family. Like, we're well, going to do what it takes to keep her Well, here. when Sarah came to me, or came to us and said yeah. she was leaving, you were very nervous. You were like, a lot of emotions coming up for mm -hmm. you because, yeah. you know, you've been a part of this team for so long and it's more than just a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember thinking in that moment, I go, I have a mo I have an opportunity where I can be the biggest jerk in the world and try to enroll you to stay and figure out any way possible to get you to stay. And I bet there might be a way to get you to stay. Mm -hmm. If I really if wanted to, you, yeah. if I really wanted to, I would figure out any way, incentives, whatever it may be. What? It was coming from you. No. I, so you said I have zero power of enrollment over you. You, no, the two of you, <laughs> what you just saw me, like, even getting on this podcast. Tiff's even like, uh, oof. No. I if knew, you, we were two sitting at tag us, team, I would be done. Yeah. I, I knew, sitting at Starbucks at a moment, I was just like, man, this is a lot for you to talk about. And I was yeah. like, it's time, you know, if this is really that big a deal for you, then it's meaningful for you to, like, want to have this next chapter of your life of the potential of starting a family, however that's gonna look for you. And I was just like, do I wanna be someone that supports someone in their dreams and really like, if that's what you want, I want you to have it. Or do I wanna be selfish because you're the, like, the greatest thing we've ever had here? I'm like, do I wanna keep her and have her resent me a little bit, you know, or always wonder what it would have been like. So yeah. I remember that moment, I was just like, I'm happy for you. I think I said something yeah. like that. And then Matt was like, well, what's it going to take for us to keep her? And I go... I know, he started hard, and then you shut him down. You're like, no, you, you can't do that. Right. Yeah. I, and I respect that because you're right. Yeah. Exactly the way you said it. Like, I, this, I know, came through a lot of thought. Mm -hmm. You are thinking about it for months. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you were, Five, you were looking six for months the win-win. You know, you were looking for the ways to make it possible, but you just need to allow yourself the space to see what's possible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not have anything else pulling you away yeah. from the next step that you want for your life and I will I will say this on camera 
I don't think we've seen the last, but... No, yeah. I'm going to be in Summit, and I'm, you know, I hope to still be part of the team in some sure. capacity with the events. And Maybe to mastermind weekends or I something. I am committed like to that. Yeah. <laughs> it might be so, so she'll be a part of the team, just not a full-time part of the yeah, team. Yeah, like role. letting go of that. And that's, that's hard. Yeah. And it's been challenging even just in this training process, like... Ah, oh, just letting go of that and because we've got Lily. But, who, but I'm the one. Who, <coughs> but I'm the one who does that. Like yeah. it's just See, it's been all these yeah. mixed emotions and just like not wanting to let go, but having to let go and just like it's gonna yeah. be challenging. Yeah. It's be gonna fun. be great. It'll be fun. Yeah. It's gonna be great. We appreciate you. You're amazing. That's right. Thank you for everything. Thank you. What's um, anything final before I ask you the final question? I don't know. I f I feel the need to like just. I don't know, and this, this may be a, a no-no, we could edit this out, but I don't know, I just, Sarah, you have literally built this podcast with Lewis, f almost from day one, mm -hmm. and now it's over 100 million downloads and over a million listeners across the world, and I just feel like if anybody is inclined to just say thank you to Sarah, you can reach her at sarah at greatness.com. That's true. And send her a little letter. I would be grateful. Oh my goodness. I send her a letter. Super grateful. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm going to just continue to praise her for now until some of the greatness and then beyond because I mean, our, you know, my family is close friends with you. Yeah. My wife is close friends with you. Bella is basically family to you. So I know we're still going to be friends, yeah. but I hope we, we continue to work together. <clears throat> S-A-R-A-H. Yes, because that's a big thing. She's not the one without the age, with the age. Sarah. He actually witnessed this. It was hilarious. Because I tell him, like, every time you Sarah's meet Sarah's with an Sarah, H, they, like, they, like, girl out together. Yeah. They're like, oh, are you with an H or without? It's like the first thing, oh, my name's Sarah. Oh, I'm Sarah, too. And then we just, there's this awkward <laughs> pause, and like, with an H, and then we both wait, and then if... If yes, it's like, oh, the media I'm girlfriends. Like, like yeah. come here, girlfriend. It was just... And if not, it's like, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, I'm having a hard time letting go here, but I'll let you close mm. it out. Well, what's uh, any other things you want to share before you share your definition of greatness? No, I just, uh, again, appreciate the opportunity and the, you know, it's given me purpose. It's given me uh, a platform to use all my skills. Like, who yeah. knew? Like, oh, knowing how to sew and cook and, you know. Organizing. Yeah, just all these things that I love to do, you know, um, showing me that, you know, they are worth something, that I am a leader, that they can be monetized and, uh, you know. Um, what's the greatest skill you acquired over the last six years? Just never taking no for an answer and just that like, there's always a lower <laughs> price. And, you know, something. just like keep trying and like to ask the, you know, be comfortable being uncomfortable, you know? Mm. And it's funny, Trish even says, she's like, okay, well, if Lewis asked you to do this, would you do it? You know, because <laughs> like, if I know I'm doing it for him, it just gives me this courage or, mm. you know, to dig deeper. Um, so I'm just gonna take that in That's cool. to my next chapter and, you know, just be relentless with what I want for myself. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Nice, it's a good lesson. So what's your definition of greatness? You know, it's After just, hearing, when we were sitting here, I'm like, when you just said the last question, I'm like, I didn't prepare for that. Like, <laughs> how in all these episodes? Like, that's always the closeout question. Like, well, okay, what's the greatest answer you've heard from someone that you that you really liked? That you're like, ooh, that was a good one that resonated with me. And then what's your own personal? Mm. I can't think of the actual guest who, <clears throat> said. who said it. But I think, you know, just... Oh, Lord. Rewind. Rewind. Um, I just think that, I'll just say my own definition of greatness is just, you know, right now, feeling the fear and, you know, um, doing it anyway. You know, I'm like terrified, terrified to let go of this. Yeah. You've got to like edit this out for real. But just you know, trusting the process and that, you know, there's, you know, I believe that there's a um, higher power that's guiding me and, you know, just being open to the signs and 
trusting the process and, and, you know, trusting that everything's going to work out and, um, yeah, feeling the fear and doing it anyway. So we love you. We appreciate you. We love you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Coffee conversations. Great episode. Three musketeers. Thank you.